Uh, hi everyone, it's been a pleasure to share the platform with uh, our, one of the toppers named Dr. Arnav Kalra. He's ranked 13 in AIMS June 2020. So welcome, Doctor. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Out of the world, this was completely unexpected. Okay, okay. So uh, I, sh I want you to introduce yourself first. So I am Arnav Kalra. I did my MBBS from AIMS Rishikesh okay. and in this AIMS June exam, I got rank 13. Right. I wish to do MD medicine in the future. Okay, that's that's great. So did you appear for your NEET exam? Yes, I appeared for NEET. I got rank 1292 in that exam. So you have, it's been an amazing journey for you that you have come from 1292 to rank 13. And yes. it's, it's a great great thing. So the first thing I wanted to ask you is that what was your strategy uh, after your NEET exam till the AIMS exam? How were uh, you approaching the subject? I had joined a test and discussion course okay. that helped me have a schedule and helped me finish subjects on time and it helped keep me disciplined. So I followed that and after that I spent the next uh, two months like in May and June I spent that time revising the important things and okay. just solving giving grant tests, solving MCQs, and that. Okay, so when did you actually started your preparation for your MD exam? So the preparation, the actual preparation, it starts uh, from the day you start medical school because the exam can ask anything from anywhere and your the amount of background knowledge, it really helps in the exam. Right. But specific preparation, I started in uh, my third year when I joined the foundation course, mm -hmm. where I started with the clinical subjects. Okay, you started with the So you did join both face-to-face -face and online platform for your preparation? Yes, I joined both of them. I used them at different points of time. So when I was like in my third year, pre-final year, I was relatively free. At that time, I used face-to-face -face platforms. Hmm. Final year internship, I used online apps. They were really helpful as my internship at my college is really, really busy. Hmm. And now after internship, I again had time to join a face-to-face -face class. Okay, so from third year only you have started uh, preparing your notes? Yes, I have used the same notes. I had, I used typed notes. So I typed them back in third year and I still use them for many subjects. So before your exams, you revised your notes or you did watch your videos also? Uh, for certain things, I watched videos. For example, the previous year paper discussions. Okay. So for them, watching the videos was really important. For the important topics, I revised my notes. And I also had prepared flashcards in this time. So I use them for revision, especially the important, tough to remember topics. Oh, okay. So now uh, the students who are watching your video, you they, you are mentored to them, right? So there are third year students also, fourth year students also, and interns also. So everybody will be at a different place. So how will you suggest or give uh, your suggestions to those people who are appearing at the different aspects? So I start with those who are in the third year. They have the maximum amount of time. Yes. So for them, main uh, advice is to focus on the basics, focus on the concepts mm -hmm. and study well for their exams. Mm -hmm. And also when they have free time, they should solve MCQs so that they learn about the important topics which are being asked and you know the way of solving MCQs. When someone is in the internship or post-intern phase, they have to be more selective. They have to be more efficient. So the most important thing is to make a schedule. Uh, I believe and uh, like most of the apps and the classroom, all of them, they try to cover the subject in approximately 150 to 200 days. Mm -hmm. And then you have another 50 or so days for revision. So each day, you know, you have to make each day count, mm -hmm. have to study each day and you have to uh, be prepared. Like what will you do in the last one week, the last one month. So for that, it's important to have good notes, whether they are handwritten, typed, and, uh, or maybe you have to make good flashcards so that you're really prepared for the revision because at the end of the day, it's that revision which matters. Okay, so now after the NEET exam, there was a pandemic and uh, it must have affected your study schedule also. So did you apply any different strategy for the, these months or anything benefited you more in these months? So the last one month or so was full of uncertainty because you never knew when the exam was going to be conducted. It, uh, they gave a date, then they used to delay it and all of those things, they were definitely stressful. So to deal with this stress, to deal with these uncertain times, it's important. I used to solve uh, custom modules of MCQs. Mm -hmm. I used to solve the previous year papers, previous year questions. They used to keep me on track. They used to help me revise and mm -hmm. they can be done at any point of time. So 
we were really helpful. Okay, so now I wanted to ask you the importance of grand tests. So how important grand test was there in your preparation? Grand tests are really important. They tell us about our weaknesses okay. and it's important to use them to analyze where we are going wrong. They teach us how to sit for three hours in front of a screen, how to remain focused. Okay. So I think they're really helpful. It's important to give them on schedule, give them regularly, and it's important to analyze their results. And also one must not get demotivated or, you know, feel sad even if they get a bad rank. In the last mock test I gave just before AIMS exam, my rank was 97. So, and after that, see, I have to take it in my stride. I have to take care of all my weak points rather than think I'm in 97. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I may not get what I want. So. So every student have a weak subject and a strong subject, right? So what is your take on that? How should a person should? Uh, take a uh, weak subject and a strong subject. So there's a proverb. It says that one should eat the frog first thing in the morning. Okay. Now here a frog means anything which you don't like, which is not tasty or which is tough to handle. So that's a, a, a weak subject or a hard subject. Right. The thing is, it's important not to get bogged down in the hard subjects. Mm -hmm. Like you don't want that you spend a lot of time on the hard subjects so that you end up forgetting even the easy subjects, the subjects you knew well. So in that, I would suggest that one should have a balance. Maybe if uh, in a single day you can divide it into two parts, mm -hmm. and uh, some the you know the prime of the time can be given on the hard subject, whatever you are doing, and then the rest of the time you can do an easy subject to feel better and to you know keep balance and keep the preparation going. So this time the AIMS exam was consisting of only single best answer. So what is your take on the choosing of the subject? Suppose a person don't have time, but he is, uh, he wants to get into a central institute. So how should he approach the different subjects? What should he actually focus on? The most important thing is solving the previous year questions. Okay. Once a person solves them, they get a good idea of in how the questions are asked in each subject. And uh, then, uh, like, once you've solved the previous year questions, when you read through the notes, those lines, those words which have been asked previously, they jump out of the page. And it becomes easier to revise them and it becomes easier to focus on them. So I feel that helps. Uh, regarding subjects, uh, once you go through previous year papers, you know which subjects are more important. Some subjects have a lot of questions being asked, but they're also difficult. And it's possible that other students will also not know the answers to them. So one should not spend too much time on those subjects. Okay. So now uh, you are taking MD medicine. So we wish you all the very best for your future endeavors. Uh, so what will be your take home message for all the students who are watching your video? Uh, my take home message will be first have a plan, stick to it. Don't lose hope and stay positive and keep going. One day you'll get what you want. Okay. Thank you so very much, Dr. Arna. Wish you all the very best. So Thank stay you. in touch with us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take Bye -bye. care.